Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Gino's Model Train. I'm um, Gino, uh, and this is going to be a uh, how-to video on the uh, retaining wall that I built for my module that I'm working on. Uh, Mike Jensen, uh, over 15th Street layout, uh, had requested a how-to on it, uh, so here we go. Uh, but I started out with a uh, for sale sign that I got at the dollar store and a uh, brick uh, pattern sheet uh, that I ordered from... Uh, Micro Mart, and I cut both into two inch strips because that's the height of my wall, but you can make it as high as you want to. Uh, these sheets are from JTT Architectural Models. Uh, the part number is 97422, and like I said, I got it from Micro Mart, and I'll post this in the description as well. Uh, but these are good little sheets. Uh, they come in eight and a half by 11, uh, so there's plenty of it. It goes a long way. And it's just real good to work with. I like it. I'll be using it again, and I suggest that you give it a try. Uh, but this is just like I said, this is going to be a simple how to. Uh, this wall started out uh, as a temporary uh, stand in for a wall that I was buying. Uh, but to start out with, we're just going to glue the uh, brick sheet to the uh, back of the sign, uh, just using regular super glue. Uh, I was watching. Uh, Thomas McGuin's uh, video on his Nashville and Eastern uh, layout, and he had uh, was showing some uh, prefab retaining walls that he had bought that I really liked, and I intended on going with that, but uh, I said I needed something just to uh, kind of do use as a stand-in, so I threw these little uh, retaining walls together, uh, and I tell you, I've got more comments on. Uh, on this little uh, throw together project probably than anything that I've done so far on YouTube. Uh, but what I'm doing now, I'm just gluing some of these uh, little brick uh, strips uh, that I had left over from a DPM kit. Uh, and they were scrap. And I'm just uh, gluing those to, to the front to kind of break up the, just the straight pattern of the wall. And I'm not, <clears throat> I didn't measure them. Uh, I just kind of did it by sight. But you could uh, you could actually make these from uh, cutting uh, the sign in strips and overlaying it with uh, strips of the brick paper as well. Uh, I just like I said I just had these in the scrap box and uh, I was using these. But this thing goes together pretty pretty easy. It's pretty quick. And once we let those dry, uh, I trimmed off the bottoms of them to the bottom of the wall. And now I'm going to spray the, uh, the whole wall with uh, camouflage paint. It's a uh, khaki color. Uh, get it at Walmart. Uh, this is real good concrete color once you age it. Uh, it really turns out well. I think it was like $3 off the ship, rattle can. But once we got the wall sprayed, I'm getting ready to uh, put the decals on. <clears throat> and the decals that I got, uh, I made the Coke uh, decal uh, that's going on, I'm getting ready to put on now. Uh, I just printed it out, downloaded a sign and printed it out with a laser printer on some laser decal paper. And I'm just painting up the, uh, the back around just to kind of bring out the white and the decal and I'm using just regular acrylic paint and it's uh it's almost dry brushing it on and here I'm sliding the decal onto the wall and I said this is just one that I printed out And they print out on clear decal paper, so you kind of have to paint a little background just to bring, bring out the white part of the sign. And you just want to press it in, uh, make sure you get the brick pattern coming through it. And then you'll wipe away any little white residue that comes out from under it. And as it dries, I just pat it along just to bring out the brick detail. Now 
I'm putting down the background for the other detail. And I'm gonna highlight this one a little bit with some acrylic blue paint, uh, just to kind of bring out the decal a little bit further. Uh, you don't have to do this, but it just kind of adds to it. And if, uh, if anybody's interested, uh, I can do a little video on how I make my decals. Uh, but it's pretty simple. Just be sure that you use a, uh, a laser printer with some laser decal paper. I've tried every type of inkjet paper and printer that you can to make decals and it just does not work. I'm putting that decal on, getting it in position. Press it in so just bring out that big uh, brick detail. Sorry, I got my head in the way on that shot. Now, I'm just adding a little more of the blue uh, just around the edges. And now I'm going to take a toothpick uh, and just kind of trim out uh, around the edges of the uh, graffiti decal. This just kind of separates it from the wall. And just keep dabbing the tip of your toothpick in until you get all the way around it. And now I'm gonna go back with some black just to make it stand out a little bit more. You don't have to be perfect for this, because a lot of it's going to fade when you start doing your weathering. But it really kind of separates the graffiti from the wall. And once we let that dry, uh, we're going to get ready for our washes. Uh, what I use is acrylic paint and alcohol. And I don't measure it, I just mix it to a thin consistency. But I'll start, usually I'll start with my light wash first, which is a little bit of gray and uh, black paint mixed with alcohol, and I'll just brush it on just to bring out, this will dry and bring out some of the brick detail and mortar. And it'll also start fading the decals too. But I brush it on pretty liberally. I like using alcohol too better than I do water because the, the working time's a whole lot quicker. Uh, the alcohol evaporates uh, in about 15 minutes after you put it on and you can continue on with your next step. And it seems to me the alcohol makes the paint fade a little bit better. It looks a little more natural once it dries. Now we're going to go back with a black wash. Uh, and it's alcohol and black acrylic paint mixed. I uh, just want to get it thin. I said I don't measure. Uh, but I, when I do the black, I'll usually stand it up and I'll just do it from the top and kind of let it run down on its own. Because, you know, during the weather when it's raining, the water's going to drain down the side and that's the kind of look that you want. This black wash is really going to fade that, that wall out. And you can add it in steps too. Uh, you can let it dry and then come back and add, uh, add it in different places to make street marks. Or get it to the level of uh, fade that you want. But after it dries, this is the final, uh, the final look. And it fades out real well and looks realistic, especially when you're photographed outside. Uh, but that's pretty much it. I said this was just a little project that was thrown together that was going to be a temporary thing, but I think I'm going to leave it, uh, considering all the good comments that I've got. And I appreciate y'all, all the comments and the uh, subscription. Uh, please like and subscribe my channel. Uh, and Mike, I hope this uh, kind of helps a little bit with my how to video. Uh, if y'all hadn't checked out Mike Jensen's channel, it's KU4PC and his 15th Street layout. Uh, he's got an awesome little switching layout. Uh, he 
as well, worth taking time to subscribe to him and check his, check his layout out. But that'll pretty much do it for this little how-to video. I'm Gino from Gino's Model Trains. I appreciate everything, and we'll see you next time.